Welcome to my kitchen. Um, today I am going to be making some breakfast bars and I'm going to show you how to get great shots using any camera. Um, if you're interested in food photography and you want to maybe grow some of your skills, it's really simple to get fantastic shots just using a few very, very simple steps and some very simple lighting. Now today I'm going to use um, continuous lights. I would normally use flashlights but today because I'm filming and because it's the more simpler way of lighting, I'm gonna use continuous lights and I'll show you those lights in a few minutes. Um, and that will give you a kind of a good understanding about how to use them. I'm also gonna shoot with different cameras to show you how you can get shots using any camera. So I'm gonna use my iPhone. I'm gonna use this very um, cheap older camera. It's called the Fujifilm X-M1. And it's um, with, a ver with a very, very cheap 100 pound manual focus lens. So very, very budget but beautiful camera and, and lens. And I will use this, the X-T30, um, Fujifilm X-T30, which is their, their kind of most recent camera in this range. Um, so you've got the kind of full spectrum there. And I'll use a, um, what's the equivalent to an 85 millimeter lens, which is like a portrait lens. Um, now I do a lot of food photography um, as a professional photographer. I shoot for food magazines, I shoot for all kinds of restaurants um, and chefs, all, all kind of a whole range of different food photography. And so today I want to really simplify the whole thing um, and just show you how to get great shots of your food in your kitchen um, so that you can grow your skills. So I'm gonna make these breakfast bars and then we will get to, um, to photographing them. Okay, so let's have a quick think about the lighting. Now, I use all different types of lighting for food photography, from big kind of um, soft boxes with flash photography, um, with big diffusers, um, with uh, continuous lights, sometimes no light at all. It just depends on where you are, what the lighting is like. Now, I'm in a conservatory today, so there's obviously a lot of light coming in. You've got light coming in from all the windows, so from one, two, three, and more importantly, the top, there's light pouring onto this table. So it's gonna make photographing the, um, the food, in one respect, very easy, because you can keep your ISO very low, which means you won't have a lot of noise. Um, if you're not familiar about kind of that kind of thing, it's just whether your camera is gonna have a clean image or a slightly grainy image. Um, you will be able to shoot, you know, with lots of aperture, which will mean you've got obviously lots of, um, it's called depth of field, where you can basically um, see everything and if you want to, or you can blur stuff out if you want to, you know, it's entirely up to you. There's room for creativity when you've got lots of light. Um, but if I was to turn off, at the moment I've got two lights shining on me. Now, if they were to go off, what, what we would have in here would be a, a kind of a, a lovely lit bright but flat look. Now the problem with a flat look is that it's not very interesting when you photograph the food. It may be bright, but actually it's all the same, which means that really there'd be nothing to define your food from the background. And what you really want is lighting that's positioned in such a way that it creates a bit of atmosphere in your image. Now, because we've got a very bright room, you're not gonna be able to get the type of shots where you've got a very dark and then a little tiny pop of light on them because you need a very dark room to do that. But in this situation, we can still create some dynamic looks. So we'll, um, when the food comes out in a few minutes, we will start to do that. Um, but let me show you the lights I'm using today. So today I'm using um, some lights by a company called Newer. I'm using a set of three of these and they are actually really great for food photography as well as video because you can do the same setup and shoot both your food with a stills camera and a video camera if you're filming yourself or whatever like I am today. I don't really want to be using flash because then I'm going to be having to have you know lights for the video and separate flash for the photos. Whereas in this I can use in this situation I can use both at once. Um, so 
very bright. Now, on the back here, you can see what happens. You have got um, the option here to change what's called your temperature. Now, the great thing about this is you can go right from a temperature of 3200 K. That's how temperature is measured in K. And basically, that's like a tungsten light, a very orangey light. I don't know if you can see it on, on here. See, even just through there, you can see it's more orangey um, in that look. And you can go all the way up from there, um, all the way up to 5,600 K. Now I'm gonna have it round about 5,100, which is basically what daylight is, because this room is a daylight, it's lit with natural light. So around about 5,100 will give you something around natural light. And you can see there it's much more natural um, in, in that look. And within these lights, you've got lots of options. You've got all kinds of modes which I won't be needing today, but you can go for party mode and, you know, flashing things and all that. But for food photography, this is really what I need. Round about daylight, and I can just change the temperature, and here you've got the percentage of how bright you want this light to be. The other great thing about these lights is that they have um, things called barn doors. Now the barn doors, what they are, are these flaps. And this means that when you are shooting your food, or any subject, what you can do is you can literally open and close the barn <laughs> to, um, to move the light. And that stops the light from leaking out onto areas of the photo that you don't want it to. You can actually be very, very kind of definite as to where you want your lighting to, um, to be. And that helps a lot when it comes to shooting food because you don't want the same light everywhere. You want to be able to manage the light. So that will be very useful. So before I take this next door and cut it up and, and photograph it on the table, I want to get a quick shot of it on the granite worktop because I think it looks quite nice with this. So I've got two lights set up. I've got a light behind me here, one of these newer lights which has got the barn doors um, slightly closed, giving a bit of light onto this side, and another one just behind the camera. Again, barn doors slightly closed, bringing it onto this side. Just gives me two lights. Uh, um, these two angles and I'm going to shoot coming down the, the kind of in the middle of that I'm coming through that light I don't want to shoot against the light I don't want to have the light behind me because it will just um, kind of light the front only I want the lights coming from both sides to kind of give an all-round effect over the whole thing and I'm going to come down slightly low and I'm going to keep this bit of uh, parchment paper behind and the knife in slightly as well, just to show that I'm at, this, is a, this is the kind of stage I'm at of this process. And F4, shutter speed 125, ISO 640. And that looks great. So I've got the, um, the product here, the, uh, the breakfast bites already. Um, they're actually quite nice, I tasted one, and uh, they taste all right. I think they probably need a bit of yogurt with them, just to give them some extra niceness, but you know, they're all good. And um, different backdrops here, you know, you never know with, if I travel to different clients, you never know what they've got with them. So I often take a few rolled up backdrops with me, and time and time again, they've been so useful. But if you're at home, just get whatever you can get. Um, you may just want to use your worktop or something, but I'm gonna just, choose one of these backdrops. Um, yeah, I just take this one, which has got some nice bits of kind of white in it and blue and black, kind of like a nice, almost like an aluminium surface, I think. Anyway, whatever it is, it's there. So what I would do is I would just start to build up the shot. Um, you've got to think about, are you going to come from above? Are you going to come from below? And what I often do is I would design a short, a little kind of set, which has got the option for me to shoot from above and shoot from a kind of a, a 45 degree angle, just to show some of the height of the food. So in this situation, what I would do is I will place like a little wooden board like this, and I'll just start to put, put some of these on. Sometimes I'll stack them. Um, in this situation, I could even put a little bit of um, parchment down and you just start to build. Just imagine you're, a, you're back to being a child again. And you know, you're, you're thinking about, about stacking Lego or I don't know, just think about how you wanna build this. Now, 
the, the kind of, I could do this, the downside of having this parchment in is that if I shoot from above, all I'm gonna see is the parchment. So I'll probably just have one at the bottom and then maybe I'll just see how, if I can get like two or three stacked up together without them falling off. Um, my family are gonna eat these later, so <laughs> I don't wanna destroy them all. Um, okay, and then there's maybe one here. And you often wanna cre create some kind of relationship between the board and the backdrop and so that it doesn't feel like separate things. You want to help them to feel like the same um, kind of the same set, not separate things or part of the same picture. So in this situation, what I would do is I'd probably either place one here or I would allow some crumbs to maybe a bit of parchment and maybe one that's been slightly broken up. I could just take this one and I could just give it a little bit just something to show that, you know, there's something in the background and it, it's all part of the same image. Now, I'm gonna need probably another one here. Now what I could do in this situation is because I said before it would look good with yogurt, I actually think maybe I'll put a little spoon of yogurt in this shot and maybe some blueberries and it would just kind of give a, a bit more to the image to show how you can, you know, you can eat this. So I'll just do that. Okay, so here are some blueberries and some natural yogurt. Now, I've put them in these little, little kind of pots um, because these will actually make a nice, kind of help the image. So I'm gonna put the blueberries just here because they will kind of correspond to the color on the backdrop. And I'm gonna just take a few of them and then just put a couple down there as well. It just kind of gives the relationship between um, the, the, the two areas and then maybe I could you know put some yogurt on top but I think it'll make it messy so at the moment I'll just kind of put the yogurt just here and it responds nicely to this curve in this board and I'm just going to kind of bring it near that curve and just angle this and so hopefully even from your direction you can see the shots starting to build up um, maybe there are other things you could add in. You could look for things around you. You've got uh, some flowers here, which the yellow might actually, might would do well. It might just give a little bit of color um, into the image. And so I feel like it's beginning to build. And so what I've got now, I've got these two lights coming in here. You'll see I've got a scrim here. This is like, um, it's basically a two stop diffuser. And this will stop the sun from hitting my face, but also from, more importantly, from hitting the table because I don't want the, um, the sun to have any kind of influence over um, uh, the lighting. Now it will have a bit of influence, but this diffuser is so good that it will actually diffuse that sunlight and help and just give it a lovely cast of light without shadow. Now the reason I've got these two lights in the position I have and, and the barn door is slightly closed is they're basically pointed directly at this area here. And the idea is, is that they will eliminate all the shadows between them. As they come in from two different directions, if I turn one of them off, there'll be shadow from, from one of them and correspondingly. But, and this way, I basically eliminate shadow. Um, I've used the scrim to eliminate the sun's shadow. And then I should now have, hopefully, a nice, um, a nice photo. So let's start with the iPhone and let's see what the iPhone gives me. Okay, so here we go. One from that way, and I keep wanting to look into the eyepiece, <laughs> um, and maybe just see where the shot is. I think the shot probably is a, a from above shot, a flat lay, I call it. So let's try that, and then let's try with this camera. This one is a manual focused lens, um, so. This is a you know very cheap camera. If you're looking for a camera which you want to get a few shots, it looks like a compact camera. It's called the XM1. Very well priced. There we go. Let's have a little look at that. We've got that. Um, ISO 400, the, and I'm on an aperture 
of about 2.8 on this one. There we go. And then now we'll try with the, the professional camera. Okay, so we'll get higher. This one's the 85 millimeter lens, which means it's actually much more zoomed in, as it were. So I'm gonna have to stand up. So you, <laughs> you may not see me for a second. Um, and then we'll just get a shot from here. You don't have to photograph the whole thing. You know, when you've got a flat lay like this, you don't have to actually photograph the whole, the whole amount of the table. You can do, if it looks great, then do. But sometimes it's nice just to cut bits out and just to show, show bits of it. But always making sure that your main food that you're shooting is your hero. Everything else is there to kind of embellish it, make it look like it's you know, meant to be together and give it that lifestyle kind of feel. But actually, it's, um, it's meant to be about the hero. So try and make sure that you are, you are keeping the hero as the hero. I've got here about an aperture of about 4.5, which just gives me um, enough in focus, but will slightly blur out the backdrop. And then we'll just bring this around here maybe. Once you start to shoot and you start to notice things, you can just start moving bits around just to fit, fit what you're looking to do. So as you can see, it's a very simple process to get some great shots. You know, even with the iPhone, with a very cheap compact camera, and obviously with a, a better camera, you know, you can get your own food shots at home using whatever you've got, just by thinking about the way you light it. Really, it comes down to your creativity um, and your lighting. If you set up a lighting situation like this, where you've got both kind of every area covered, you can then really get the shots um, that, that you're looking for. So any questions, do leave them in below um, and I will do my best to answer you. Um, and yeah, I hope you found this helpful. Thanks ever so much. Bye.